Hello everyone, it's Johnny Catru, and today I'll be listening to Songs from the Wood by English prog and folk rock group Jethro Tull. I have heard this album a few times before, but it's been kind of a slow one to grow on me. It's taken a while for me to come around to this one, but I think today might be the day it finally clicks. I started listening to Jethro Tull back when I was a teenager, and while I didn't love their first few albums, like many people, the album that really got me into them was Aqualung. But the album that really made me a fan was Thick as a Brick, which you know is celebrated as one of the greatest prog rock albums of all time, despite being a send up, a Mickey take of prog rock. But the music on Thick as a Brick is just moving, memorable, epic, just so well written. It's really strong in every way. So I was a little bit disappointed when shortly afterwards I heard a passion play and found it to be kind of the opposite, just really difficult and not very memorable. And the albums after that didn't really help much either. War Child didn't really do much for me and Minstrel in the Gallery I did enjoy but still not to the level of Thick as a Brick or even Aqualung or some of the stuff that came before it. So at some point I decided just to skip straight to Songs from the Wood because the album seems to be pretty well loved. But yeah on first listen I was still a bit lukewarm to it. I definitely got more out of it than I did something like A Passion Play or War Child but it certainly didn't blow me away like I was hoping based on its reputation. So I took another break from Jethro Tull which this time ended up lasting several years. But after hearing Thick as a brick again recently and being devastated by its perfection, I felt compelled to give Songs from the Wood another try and try to continue my journey with Jethro Tull. And what do you know, I enjoyed it quite a bit, especially certain tracks which we'll get into. So today I want to listen to it once again as a whole album and at the end I'll give my final rating for the album. For calibration, thick as a brick, on some days it's a 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10. Aqualung is an 8 out of 10, and you know Minstrel in the Gallery, maybe that's a 6 out of 10, War Child a 5 out of 10. So let's see where Songs from the Wood ends up landing for me on that scale. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button for me, and let's get into this. Track 1 is the title track, Songs from the Wood. Let me bring you songs from the wood. Songs from the wood, make you feel the toast you are. Okay, so the intro of this song sounds pretty much as you would expect it to, you know, based on the title and the album cover, Old English Folk. But once the whole band comes in, it shows that Jethro Tull haven't forsaken prog completely to go full on folk, not at all. The band sounds heavy and tight, as they always have. And this is the 40th anniversary Stephen Wilson mix I'm listening to, which of course sounds fantastic. It wasn't the version that I first listened to years back when I first heard this album. That would have been the previous remaster that I bought on CD like 10 years ago or something, which sounded all right. But this version just sounds so much clearer and it really helps the music come to life. I'm not crazy about the synthesizer sound. I think it's a polymogue. It's quite a common sound that starts popping up in albums from the late 1970s. For example, going for the one by Yes, incredible album but I'm not keen on that Polymoog synthesizer sound. Still, on this Jethro Tull track, it's not the main focus by any means. It's just kind of used to color in a bit, but still, I could probably do without it. I miss the old Hammond organ. <laughs> but the overall sound is still beefy and pure Tull. The melodies are fun and memorable, but I wouldn't say they move me too much, especially not past the introduction, which in my experience is fairly typical of late 70s Jethro Tull compared to the early, early 70s stuff, which was often quite emotional. But yeah, overall, Songs from the Wood is a cool song that functions really well as an opening track. I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10. Next song is track 2, it's called Jack in the Green. Now 
So that's obviously a much smaller song than the opening one. And it stays very much in the folk area instead of going rock at any point. And I think it works pretty well. The melody is memorable. I kind of end up feeling similarly about this song as I do the first song though. I enjoy it and the sound is great, but the mood of the track just isn't quite enough to move me. It's funny though, I think that when people imagine Jethro Tull, who haven't heard them, probably expect that this is what they sound like. When in fact they hadn't really done much of this kind of straight up folk music until now. But unsurprisingly, they do it very well. I reckon I'll give this track a 7 out of 10 as well. Next song, track 3, is called Cup of Wonder. So I love that main riff in this song. I think it's taken a few listens for it to grow on me though. I think maybe when I first heard the album, I just thought it wasn't anything special. But yeah, I've really come around to it. It has the folk rock vibe of something Fairport Convention would have done in their more upbeat moments, or Jethro told themselves. It's really catchy and a little bit groovy. And I would say this song even touches slightly on the magic of Thick as a Brick with its variety in its moods and riffs. I guess I only wish that Ian Anderson would just push his vocals a little bit harder. Five years earlier, I'm pretty sure he would have just put a little bit more grit into a song like this. Still, I have a whole lot of fun with this song. It's very memorable and it's probably my favourite track so far. I give it an 8 out of 10. Next song is track 4 and it's called Hunting Girl. Alright, so I love the medieval sounding motifs in this song. The polymogue actually works quite well in this context. And we've got some really fine playing from the whole band on that song. Lots of great flute parts of course, but Martin Barr also contributed some really nice harmonised lead guitars. Unfortunately I would still say I'm not crazy about the melody of this song. It's good. It's not bad, it's just about memorable, but it doesn't quite make it to my heart. Still, I think it's very much made up for by some really strong instrumental passages. I'll give this song another 7 out of 10. The next song is the famous single from this album. It's the only one I already knew beforehand. It's track 5 and it's the Christmas song, Ring Out Solstice Bells. I actually really like that song. <laughs> I love the way the verses have kind of a tricky time signature, captures my interest straight away. And the chorus is catchy and effective. It's exciting. It doesn't surprise me that the song was a success because it does have a really strong Christmas party atmosphere, but it's like a sophisticated Christmas song. It's really well written and really well performed, with some quite unexpected changes along the way here and there. It very much doesn't stay in one place. For a song that's less than four minutes long, quite a lot happens in it. So I don't know how this is going to go down with strong fans of this album, considering some of the ratings I've given to earlier tracks, but I'll give this one an 8 out of 10. It's a great song. Now the next song is track 6 and it's called Velvet Green. Who's a young girl's fantasy in an old place green? Brilliant. It's actually my favourite song on the album probably. We get more of that medieval vibe with the synthesizer mimicking something like an old harpsichord and even what sounds like a xylophone coming in at some points. But yeah, I just find this song to be magical. If Cup of Wonder touches on the magic of Thick as a Brick, Velvet Green 100% has it. The melody is just wonderful. It has all the features that I find myself wishing for in many of the songs that come before it. It's got the feeling, the emotion, and a little bit of Ian Anderson's bending of the notes in that bluesy way that he used to do. Plus all the changes through all these instrumental sections all using that old English folk sound. I just love it. In my personal opinion, Velvet Green is the song where everything they've been going for on the album finally comes together. 
and I give it a 9 out of 10. The next song is track 7 and it's called The Whistler. Okay, so I have kind of mixed feelings on this song. It does a really great job of transitioning from Velvet Green, keeping that old folk atmosphere intact. But obviously this one is a more concise, catchy tune. I adore the emotionally potent verse and the chorus is catchy and upbeat. The only problem I have is that for me, they don't entirely work together. I always end up feeling just a little bit disappointed when it transitions from the minor key verse into the more trivial sounding chorus. So yeah, I love all the parts of this song, but as a complete song, it's let down slightly for me. It's so almost an eight out of 10, but I think because of how I end up feeling about the song overall, it ends up as a seven out of 10 for me. The next song is the longest song on the album, track eight, and it's called Pibroch, Cap in Hand. I really have trouble making my mind up about this one. When the track starts and you first hear that really loose melody on the lead guitar with all the delay on it and everything, I think it sounds pretty good. But I remember the very first time I heard it, all those years ago, I didn't like it at all. I found it to be really messy and unmemorable. But yeah, messy more than anything. It just has this feeling of being so untied down, but then almost being tied down. It's like just kind of unsatisfying. But that being said, in recent listens, it has grown on me. And when the song started this time, I was immediately like, oh yeah, I love this tune. It just feels like it's not always entirely working, I guess. But I think if they'd just kept it as the intro of the song, I would probably have much more positive feelings about the song overall. I think it's repetition is perhaps it's downfall for me because each time they repeat it, I'm thinking again, is this working, you know? <laughs> or is this just a mess? But once the swung beat on the drums come in and you got the melody with the flute and everything, it sounds really nice and it's kind of a refreshing change of feel from much of the rest of the album. There are a couple points, instrumental bits that don't seem to do too much for me. Overall, I just feel like the song is really long and doesn't really earn it for me. But there are certain parts of it that I, I do enjoy quite a bit. So yeah, this one is a hard one to rate. It's quite difficult to get my feelings straight on it. And I suppose I was hoping that getting to this point, listened to it quite a few times now, I would have my feelings together, but I'm still quite mixed on this song. But yeah, I think in the end, I have to land on the fact that overall there's plenty to enjoy in it, but I don't think it works as a whole. I'll give it a 6 out of 10. And that just leaves us with the last song, track 9, and it's called Fire at Midnight. Take off your makeup, fold your clothes neatly away. It's good to be back home with you. And that's the end of the album. Honestly, not a very strong end to the album in my opinion. And the confused nature of the track sums up my feelings of much of the album on the whole. The song's only just over two minutes long, very short, and yet it goes through all these changes and I don't think any single part of it is particularly strong. Honestly, just an okay last song for me. I think I'll round that off with a five out of 10. So looking over this album with a bit of perspective now, I can definitely see why it's taken me a while to get my thoughts together about this album and really understand why I have such mixed feelings about it. Because I don't think it's a consistent album. I think it's an album with some great strengths, with a pretty compelling overall sound, but the songwriting for me is very inconsistent. Some extremely great moments and some other moments where it just doesn't seem to be working. And plenty of other moments in between that almost get there, not quite. So yeah, for me, it hasn't been immediately clear on my earlier listens. Is this a good album? Is this a bad album? 
the truth is, it's everywhere in between. And the quality really does range from the extreme heights that they hit on Aqualung and Thick as a Brick being represented in stuff like Velvet Green, and the somewhat dull and often really unmemorable melody writing that I already heard on stuff like War Child popping up here and there in some of the other tracks. And yeah, when we were at the point of Velvet Green and even The Whistler, I was thinking, you know what, on the whole, this is a really strong album. But yeah, for me, the last two tracks definitely let it down quite a bit. But yeah, when I think back to the strongest songs on the album, I do end up having overall positive feelings about it. And you know, Velvet Green has always been my favourite song since I very first heard the album. But I'm glad to say that not only has it stayed my favourite song, it's actually grown on me even more. And now I think it's one of Jethro Tull's best songs even. I think the track that's grown on me the most is probably Cup of Wonder, which earlier on didn't do too much for me, but has become quite a big favourite of mine. And Ring Out Solstice Bells, I always liked it, but I guess I feel I haven't always been fully honest with myself about how much I like it. But now I'm like, Oh, that's a great song. So yeah, I do feel overall pretty satisfied with this album, and it has reignited my interest in the band. I look forward to at some point listening to the follow-up, Heavy Horses, and its accompanying live album, Bursting Out. And on the whole, I'd say I'll give Songs From The Wood a 7 out of 10. So please follow me over on twitch.tv slash we're doing listening parties, listening to full albums that we cover on the channel, plus listening to new singles that come out, sharing my thoughts with you on that, and you can chat with me about whatever we're listening to. If you enjoy my content, please consider supporting me with the link in the description to buy me a coffee. It really helps me to be able to keep making these videos and keep my channel going, so I really appreciate it. And thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take it easy.